Hi, I'm Ross Kenneth Erkin, Personal Finance Editor at The Street. This is The Moolah Files, and today as my guest, I have Anton Troinovsky, uh, reporter at The Wall Street Journal. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you here. Thank you. So I'm curious, it's 2013. Why are we paying so much for internet connectivity on our phones and telecom services in general? I mean, one way to look at it is we are using these services more than uh, ever before. Um, but we're certainly also paying a lot more for, for phone service than we have in the past. Um, right now it's about $100 on average per household and obviously many people pay much more than that. Um, that's, uh, and that number has been go going up over the last few years even as we've been spending less on things like clothes and dining out. So it's, it's the kind of thing you really have to think about. Um, there's no question we're spending a ton of money on phone and cable and internet. And you could make the argument that the way our industries are structured in telecom, you know, kind of enables companies to charge a fair amount of money, a fairly large amount of money. But then at the same time, we are getting a ton of utility out of these things. But it's a very interesting question. But how is the division of the electromagnetic spectrum and that infrastructure worsening the problem on our pocketbooks? So um, the spectrum, the, uh, basically the airwaves, um, are kind of the core thing you need to have a wireless network run. Um, the government kind of apportions uh, the way that that spectrum is used. Um, and uh, if, if you look at it, uh, the big carriers control um, much of the m sort of most valuable uh, part of that spectrum. So then if you look at the smaller carriers like Sprint, like T-Mobile, like Metro PCS, like Cricket, um, so much of their kind of strategic thinking right now is around how do we get more spectrum. And you see companies paying billions and billions of dollars in these spectrum auctions that the government creates. I mean, th it, there isn't really a necessarily a great way to solve this. Spectrum is a finite resource, but um, that is kind of often the limiting factor in what companies are able to compete. I also want to ask about your adventures in Alabama, where there isn't a lot of uh, broadband service, uh, pretty uh, you know, typical of a lot of rural areas in the U.S. What is the price tag to get all of the U.S. on broadband, and are we going to get hit in the wallets as a result? So, so kind of to step back, um, uh, one thing that's happening is you think about kind of what is our core telecommunications service? What is the kind of most basic way that Americans stay connected? For many decades, it was the telephone, the landline phone. And the government had, there was a monopoly. There, there was the AT&T monopoly, and the government had very stringent regulations on how that monopoly could be run and required all, phone, all um, homes to have phone service or to be offered phone service by the phone company. Mm -hmm. Now it's 2013, we have many more different options for how to get connected, um, but we're in a much less regulated industry. So uh, the reason I went to Alabama was to look at, well, what happens if you're in a small town and uh, you're a kid going to middle school or to high school and you live in a home without home internet access? It's too expensive or it's just not available. Both things happen. And the answer that I found was that oftentimes kids were going to McDonald's to do their homework. It's because bizarre. They're sitting there in the parking lot, right? Yeah. And, and the reason is every McDonald's has free Wi-Fi. And often it's the only place with free wireless internet in town when the library is closed. So, I mean, it was kind of, it was fascinating. fascinating. I, I was in Alabama and I was also in rural Michigan. It kind of that experience drove home how key internet access is these days, you know, to b m very basic things like education. And also the, you know, this, the point that this so-called digital divide, which, you know, got a lot of press in the 1990s, that's still around. And you could make the argument that even though certainly the industry has made strides in getting more people connected, uh, it's still a really big issue. And it's becoming a bigger issue as internet access becomes crucial for things like education. Anton Trinovsky, The Wall Street Journal.
Thank you. Thank you for being here. This has been the Moolah Files.